Heidi, are you are you ready for this? Uh, yeah. I mean, this isn't the first time we've had a dumpster in our yard. This is like the third? The third. <laughs> What's up? Welcome back to Dude Dad. So when we first bought this house, there's this chunk of our front yard that is just kind of undone. Last year it was all thistles. This year it's this invasive viney crap. I did that iPhone thing where you like identify the plant and it says it's something called Clitoria, which sounds super weird, but that's what iPhone said it was. So today we are gonna tear into this and hopefully make a super sweet front yard living area out of this disaster. Pro tip, if you need a bunch of manual labor done, find a couple of old farm kids. They know how to work hard and they work for next to nothing because that's what they're used to. Put your back into it. Be a man, use your back. All right, Rusty Rentals just showed up with probably the most exciting drop-off ever. Look at this. Got a dingo with every attachment. I know I'm probably being unrealistic when I say that this project is gonna be easy, but it's definitely gonna be a lot easier with this stuff. And a whole lot more fun. I know there used to be a giant cottonwood right in the middle of this, and they left a giant pile here, like a hill, and I'm not sure if that's because they didn't take the stump all the way out, and there's a giant cottonwood stump right here, which would make our life way harder right now. And if it is, then uh, Aiden and Mitch get to uh, rent a stump grinder and stump grind the rest of the afternoon. Do it. We got into it, and this is all we've found of the tree so far. Just a couple pieces of wood, and they're not even petrified yet. Let's go. A few moments later. All right, I spoke too soon. There's the stump. Gonna hit it with a tractor a few times and see what happens, and hopefully it is uh, old and dead enough that it will just be able to kind of push through it. Oh, man. It up. So I think we're gonna be okay. We just gotta keep giving her heck. Yeah, you thought we were oh, stumped. We thought we were stumped, but then we stumped the stump. Is that, did you get it all, or is that? I, I mean, I, I don't know. We don't have to go any farther now. <laughs> Ask the cowboy crew, did, it, did we get it? Sure, Dane, we did. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we got the hole started. It's definitely not done yet, but we wanna just sort of start to figure out how deep we need to go. So, get out my handy dandy little Bosch level here this is a self-leveling laser line so it shoots a laser out there i marked out this white board boom nine and three quarters this is where we needed to land let's go give it a try you can barely see that laser line is right there which means that this is a little bit deeper than we need it to be now we'll take the uh, dingo and just start leveling everything to get it exactly where we need it so we got the perfect uh base to start with before we start putting in all of our fill before we put in our pavers so it would be perfect perfect paver patio Ooh, perfect. Say that five times fast. perfect paver patio for a pitcher of peach prune juice <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty impressive Okay, guys, what do you think so far? We're making a koi pond. <laughs> you know what do you think? Ah. Awesome. You want to help Daddy with the level? Look, this is where we need to be. That's where the line is. What does that mean? Um, I don't know. <laughs> it means our hole's a little bit too deep right here. Is that your landscaping outfit? Okay, looks good. In how many ways can I show you how much I love you? All right. 
we've got her mostly dug down and cleared out. But here's the thing. I actually don't know anything about landscaping other than how to use a shovel. That's why I got my friend Israel here. He owns uh, his own company called Lawn Barber. Israel. He's working really hard. He can't hear me. Yo. Oh, hey, <laughs> What's our next step? Uh, edging and uh, getting getting the mulching and rock area leveled out. Perfect. Edging, rock area. Let's hit it. <laughs> All right, we got it all leveled off all the way around where the patio is gonna be, and this is where our sort of mulch rock plant bed is gonna be. Now we gotta figure out our irrigation system so we can put in drip line for all the said plants. So I'm gonna turn the sprinklers on and see what we're working with. That seems like an issue right there. Basically, the water comes to the lawn from behind the house. It comes right here, and you've got two lines. Your zone one, your zone two. There's a T in zone two, that takes the water this way and this way. The one that goes this way goes to the lawn. So we just need to take that section, cut it, and hook it to zone one. Then you've got the whole lawn on one zone, and the other zone two will just be our drip line. So this is gonna be Heidi's favorite part. We got these uh, flower boxes here, and the flowers always die in them because she forgets to water them. So we're gonna run the drip line underneath the sidewalk so that the flower boxes get water all the time. Hey, Israel, special delivery. Look what I got, man. Look at this. Oh, snap, are these new boots? Yeah, I, I heard you saying your feet hurt yesterday. Yeah. So I thought, get you set up with a new set of Georgia boots. Look at those kicks. Man, I never had no Georgia boots. Those are nice. I wear mine every day. Appreciate it. Yeah, these dude. are nice. No problem, man. These are waterproof, they're steel tall. Oh, really? They're waterproof? Yeah, and they don't need much breaking in. They pretty much feel good day one. Thanks, dude. Thanks Thank for you. your hard work. Here comes our mulch and our rock. It's a good day to be alive. Now comes the fun part. We gotta start leveling our base layer of rock that's gonna be the foundation of the patio pavers. Got our string line set up and this will tell us if we're level or not. Start raking some rock around and find out. All right, it is finally time to lay the paver. All right, the pavers are all laid. Now we're getting ready to use the demo saw to cut off all the excess on the edges. All right, now we're gonna run the packer over the pavers to make them super solid so that they don't dance anymore, but I can dance on them. Oh, that looks so good. All right, Heidi and I are now on our way to go pick out the plants for our front yard. But first, we need to talk about what's going on down here. Oh. How is the baby doing? How are you feeling? Give us an update. Uh, baby's good. We had ultrasound last week to check sizing. Sizing's right on time. I am feeling all kinds of over the place. Some days are really good, some days are not. So, it's a toss up. I never know what's gonna be. I'm the same way. Oh. Some days are good, some days are bad. I'm oh. all over the place. Oh, well. But that was even before the pregnancy, so. <laughs> all is well. All is well. This is our new friend, Shannon. She's uh, teaching us about plants. Got a, a couple picked out. All right, we've got uh, 11 more to go, Shannon. He feels obsessed with butterflies, and he got some of his own milkweed so that he could collect butterflies, but it's not doing so well, so. But there's a whole bunch of butterflies in here already, so. Let's get, let's plan for two of those. What do we got? This is why we have to get these. I really wanted an aspen tree because they got like the white bark, but they don't do so great in the front range here. They get a lot of leaf disease and stuff. So we're looking at, what's this called, Heidi? A raspberry spear. Raspberry spear. Want something with not too much spread that just gives us some texture in front of the house. So it has little berries on it that the birds like to eat. This is what I like. I like the birch because it's got this big white trunk here. It's gonna be gorgeous. Heidi doesn't think so, because why? I, I'm not saying it won't be gorgeous. I just 
think that tree, when it gets big in our front yard, is going to be ginormous. It's going to overtake that whole area. But it's going to be gorgeous. There's nothing that says that big can't be beautiful. I never babe. said that, but what You're I'm saying size is... You're size-shaming. You're size-shaming. Stop it. We're about to see it for the first time, all put together, kind of. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Wow. <laughs> it's been 10 days since we started, so it's been about eight days of work total. I love it. I think yeah, it's, it's great. great. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite part? I love the peach tree for sure. And I love the that we picked the butterfly bushes. There's already been a bunch of butterflies that have been coming around and that's been making everybody pretty excited. So a lot of people have been asking us why we wanted to put a patio in the front of our house and not in the back. That's two answers. <laughs> one, we are going to put one in the back. But two, um, you know, a fire pit to me is about community. So like putting it in the front of the house makes the most sense to me because it's a place where people come together, where you invite people in, where you sit around, you talk, and you have community. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's just really fun to finally have a space where we can like sit outside and see our neighbors and see our friends and just like invite them over for a s'more. It just, it's an, an inviting thing to allow people to come over and just hang out with you. Absolutely. High five. <laughs> and now we do the backyard. Woo. Which actually is already torn up, so more to come. <laughs> Here's how to up level your marshmallow game. Take a marshmallow, make a little hole, slide in a little piece of chocolate, seal the deal in the ends, right? We roast it up. Okay, wait, first say your catchphrase. Biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh, it's very messy. Mmm, oh. <laughs> 10 out of 10. <laughs> Describe it to me in full detail. What's going on in your mind right now? An explosion of flavor. 